What's up, Wastelanders? How's everybody doing today? I'm doing great, and I hope you are too. It's me again, Kiki B. Welcome back to the channel. Brand new year, brand new episode of Kiki B Plays Fallout 76, and we are starting off 2022 with a bang. This is one of my favorite camps of all time. I absolutely love it. It's so cozy, it's so homey. And if you know me at all, you know that I move camps like every week or so at least. So to say that I've kept this one intact for, I think, almost a year now, uh, aside from some seasonal redecorating or whatever, is pretty monumental. So I'm going to take you through this step by step in just a minute. But before I do that, just a quick reminder, make sure that you are subscribed and that you've turned on notifications so that you don't miss out on the next absolutely amazing build video. And of course, join us over on Instagram if you feel like it, at KikiBplays, we'd love to see you there. Now, this is a very location-specific build. There's only one of these that I know of in the game. And this spot is located just to the north of Harper's Ferry. Over here, we've got the north side of the city, the train tracks. And if you keep going past the train tracks, you will come across this beautiful little dam here. And we're going to be nestling our cozy home right in between those two big concrete supports. And it's going to be magnificent. Now, of course, every camp starts with a foundation, because it has to, because we can't build it any other way. So you're going to jump down here to the lower part of the dam, and you're going to start tucking your foundation in between those two big concrete supports. Now, I'm doing a really bad job of it here at first, but I'm going to tweak it and fix it and get it right. It might take you one or two tries to make sure everything's lined up right, and that's fine. To check that you have got the alignment right, all you need to do is make sure that you can snap walls on each side of the 2x3 foundation that you're going to be placing in between the supports here. As long as you can do that, the rest will be just fine. Now after doing that, we're going to take a quick second to build a staircase upward so that we can place a foundation in the right spot at the top of the dam. We're going to need that in just a little bit. So first thing, just pop down two staircases here, then throw a half floor on there and one more staircase. And then we're going to be attaching our foundation piece to that one. So the front edge of it will be two and a half floors back and three floors up from the front edge of the base of our house. And you can go ahead right away and just remove those stairs that are in between your upper and lower foundations because you don't need them at the moment. If you want to, you can leave the very top one attached to the foundation. After that, we're going to add a 2x5 deck out in front of the base of our structure, extending out over the water. And then we'll be ready to start on the walls. So we're going to be doing something a little bit different with these walls. Um, I want to create sort of a layered effect here. So I'm going to be using warehouse half walls and jail bars walls to create sort of the look of jail bars half walls on the top. So we're going to place down these warehouse half walls and destroy them with the flamethrower here. So there's going to be four of them in total. Then we're going to go ahead and snap the jail bars walls um, right into the same spot, which it lets us do once those are destroyed. Just make sure that they are attached to the correct foundation piece, that they're attached to the one on the dam side, not on the water side. And then because it's very hard to reach them to repair them, we just go up to the camp module, hit repair all. And our walls are back. Now we can put up a warehouse wall on each end here for this last bit. And 
And we're going to go ahead and throw down some wallpapers. Use any metal type wallpaper. Uh, that's what looks best here. And I messed up that wall. I'll fix it in just a minute. Okay, that wall is fixed. So now we're going to start adding the upper walls, building upward. And because we're going to be working a lot with the 1x2 staircases here, it's very hard sometimes to put walls in next to those staircases after you've placed the stairs. So I always try to place all of my walls first. So it requires a little bit of planning. Um, and then place the staircases last. Sometimes I'll even put in extra dividing walls in places around where the stairs are going to be because I'm not sure if I'll want them later or not, but it's much easier to remove them than it is to put them back in. That usually requires removing the stairs before you can put any walls in. So um, most of this is pretty open plan, but I do want a little room in this corner on the second floor. So I'm just going ahead and putting in some double walls here to make a little one tile room. All right, now we're gonna do a sort of tricky little thing up here with a garage door and a flamethrower and some magic. So in order to get this floor in here where I need it, I'm actually gonna have to remove that wall temporarily. But we're gonna put a two by three floor up there just below the top of the dam. And you can see it's offset half a floor in from our lower walls and our lower foundation. So now we can take this garage door, place it over here on the side. And I'm just going to go ahead and put my other walls here while I'm at it. Uh, since those are aligned to different floor pieces than the walls below. And I'm going to take a moment to finish building the porch that's up at the top of the dam. Now, as you see, I can't remove the floor from under this garage door uh, until I've destroyed it with the flamethrower trap. So... Now I've done that, now I can remove all of those floors and I can go ahead and put those walls back in that I had to take away temporarily. Now for now I just want that staircase out of the way. And we'll finish putting in the walls on the sides. So here's what our structure is looking like so far. We've got a two-story structure on the bottom and then a one-story structure above it that's offset by half a floor. And now we are ready to put in some stairs. So we're going to be using the lower of the two stairs. And we're going to be placing them like this. It is important that you place them the correct way because half of this upper staircase is actually going to become a balcony. So just as long as you don't get it turned around the other direction, you're fine. All right, now we can go ahead and actually put our floors in up here. And it's not liking this. I think if we repair, yeah, if we repair the garage door, then it will let us place this floor. I don't know why. <laughs> it makes no sense. All right, so now this is our balcony. Um, if you don't have any of the other staircases, then you can just leave it wire mesh and you can, uh, it, it looks fine. And you can put a wire mesh half floor 
uh, for the other part of the balcony. But I'm going to be using the log stairs, which I really love. Now we're going to go down here and we're going to put in the floors uh, on the second floor. And change the staircase to whatever you like as well. All right, now we're going to finish some of our cool layering effect downstairs. And we're going to do that with the brick stucco walls here. If you don't have these, you could use a different type of fence or wall in front, or you could just skip this step. That would also be fine. But I personally just really love the way this came out. It adds, yeah, it adds some visual interest and also a bit more um, depth and shape to the front of the structure. What I like about the structure is that overall it sort of feels like it's cascading down over the dam, almost like a waterfall or something. So because these walls stick out a bit more on the bottom, it adds more to that, that curved cascading feeling that you get as you're looking at it. Um, it's just cool. I don't know. And it is a little tricky getting the position of these in just right, so you might need to slide the walls around a bit before you find exactly where they all fit. And if it's being really picky, then you can just toggle snapping off for this last bit. And it usually works a lot better. All right, so now we've got this interesting layered thing and this big wide double door. And heading up here now, we're just gonna finish off the rest of the structure. We're gonna throw some half floors in here. And we're gonna have a staircase coming down from the porch at the top of the dam. And we're gonna finish up these side walls and put in the roof. So as you can see, I've got a sloped roof that's coming down. Try not to fall out the side of your building. And sometimes these roofs are such a pain. There we go, got it. All right, I'm gonna throw down a wall over here and snap some flat roofs to it so that we have a covered porch. And of course we can go ahead and just remove this now. All right, now we're just missing a wall um, over here. So what we're gonna do actually is, is not this. Depending on how close your foundations were, you may or may not be able to get any walls here uh, on the lower part, which is fine. Um, we'll just put down a foundation and snap a wall to it so that the wallpaper side of the wall is facing inward. And now we can change these to windows, doorways, whatever we need. All right, now out here I'm just changing around the wall types to give it a bit more of a sort of cobbled together feel. and just kind of mix it up and give it a little more texture in general. I like my sleek, modern, everything matches, everything looks great kind of builds, but I also really like these sort of really junky, wastelandy builds. They can be a lot of fun, and they can just be really, really cool to build, and they give you a lot of opportunities to be more creative with things. So we're just using a mix of wood and warehouse walls 
And basically, if we've used a wood wall across the front of a part, then we're using warehouse on the sides. And if we've used a warehouse wall across the front, we're using wood wall on the sides. Now I need a little piece of floor over here, and the floors are so weird sometimes when you're trying to put down a floor outside of a wall. Um, so you might have to add some extra pieces on and remove them afterwards, but we want a half floor over here on the side. Attach one of these little fancy things to it. And this is where we're going to stick our generator. It's up, it's out of the way, it's not too noticeable, but it's also not taking up space inside the house where we really don't want to look at it. Now if we stick a half wall here, that will allow us to snap a post in the center of that half wall so that it looks like it's supporting the corner of this little floor. Okay, up on the porch, we need some posts to support the roof. And we're going to do that using our famous column nonsense blueprint, which is just two half posts stacked up with a rug just sticking into the very bottom. You blueprint it like that, and then you can place them anywhere. Anyway, um, then you can snap, well, when their fences are not in the way, then you can snap a full-size column to the bottom of these through the roof. You can snap it through roofs, through floors, through whatever you need. Uh, it's very flexible and forgiving, which is shocking for this build system. But it will allow us to stick our columns in the middle here and on the corners of foundation pieces where the game would not normally want us to. Now, I'm not going to go through all of the wiring, um, but just a little tip, trick, whatever. Uh, I've got a water purifier over here. To do that, I just put some conduit pipes up here um, and wired the purifier to it. And I also put one of the conduits facing downward so that it sticks down through the roof. And that's what I will be later attaching to my vending machine to power my vending machine while it's on the porch. All right, uh, back down to the deck real quick. We are going to extend it just a little bit on this side. On the other side, there really isn't room for that. But over here, we can add on a few more floors and it gives us a little extra space. In my case, I'm going to be using it for a small garden because the super mutants that stand on the rock up above it need something to shoot at for target practice. And they do. They love to come and shoot my corn and destroy my watermelons. And I can't deny them that joy, you know? All right, um, I've thrown up a railing around the edge of the balcony. You can use whatever railing or fence that you like here. I've used the iron one. I think it looks good. So that's how that's going to come out in the end. All right, our structure is finished. Um, I've already got mine wired. So this is what it's going to look like on the outside before you add anything else to it. And now that it's done, let's take a look at the finished thing. Look at this. This is glorious. Oh, I love it. I absolutely love it. All right, coming in the front door. Uh, we got our water purifier. I've got some shelter entrances up here and a wonderfully cluttered, trashy looking porch. I just, I love cluttery builds like this. We've got some basics out on the porch, like a scrap box and a punch card machine and stash boxes, vending machines. We've got two vending machines there. And our little friend, the fortune teller. This is one of those times where you can just kind of throw whatever fun decor you've got on your porch 
fill it up with junk and it's going to look great pretty much no matter what you do. All right, coming down inside to our cozy living room, you can see on the right I added a half wall across the bottom. And then you've got this interesting little sort of strip of concrete here from the dam. It's it's really cool looking feature. Even though it was not in any way intentional, it ended up looking really great. And I've used this light wood flooring so that it kind of blends in with the staircase. I still don't know why we have that gap on the side of the staircase. And naturally, we have our grilled wanamingo next to our outdoor dining area. Lots of paintings, lots of clutter. This room is definitely the most, um, I guess, clean, the most spacious looking. When we get down below here, it's going to get even more cluttery. So this is my bedroom, office, whatnot down here. And I've sprinkled some of my favorite scoreboards throughout. And I've sort of used the furniture here to create the sense of a wall um, so that I don't fall off the back because there's a gap between the floor and the back of the dam. Uh, and if you fall off there, you can get stuck and it's really annoying. But I think that the dam makes such a cool back wall in this structure. I just love the way it came out. You guys are in for a real treat today. The planetarium lamp is working. Finally, I haven't seen it work in weeks. So it's a treat for me as well. So we've got some clutter and over here, this was originally um, a bathroom, but then the last season came along and we got Daphne and I thought she was just so adorable and sweet and sad and depressing and all of that. So I had to give her her own little wonderful bedroom and just, you know, love and protect I her forever. Was here. I if I'll meet so she's got this great little comic book themed bedroom, all her own. She deserves it. Poor thing. All right, now coming into, down into the garage workshop area, um, as you can see, I've gone with all the metal wallpaper, metal floors. Uh, if you don't have this particular set of metal walls and floors, you can use any of the other ones, the mechanics ones or the silver version of that, whatever it was, I forget. Armor Ace maybe, I don't know anymore. Um, and I've just filled this up with all things workshoppy. The vault rubber mats are really cool here. They always look great in a workshop area, especially around like Chem's Bench, Brewing Station, that kind of thing. Um, yeah, some more scoreboards. I managed to tuck my Armco machine over there in the corner so it's not sticking out any place stupid. Hung some lights up here to just make it cozy. And out here we've got our deck, which I love this space so much. My words to keep this place safe. And over here are my Poor, sad, broken crops. And I used the dungeon floor, in case you're curious what floor this is. I think it makes a really great terrace, personally. So yeah, we've got a lot of plants, a lot of clutter. Um, throughout the house you've got stuff to get all of the buffs that you can get. Uh, you've got all of the workbenches. You've got everything here. It's a really complete camp. And I've even added posters over here to the stucco wall so that if anyone is missing out on any of those quests that are triggered by posters, they can even get those here. This view is just lovely. It's really pretty down here. It is The mire is just breathtaking sometimes. So that is really it. Um, this is my favorite camp. I hope you love it as much as I do. Hope you enjoyed the video. I hope you learned something. If you've got any questions, just leave them down in the comments. I'm happy to answer them if I'm able. If there's anything you'd like to see in a future video, let me know that too. That's all for me today, folks. As always, take care of yourselves, be good to each other, and I will see you in the next video.